Upon hearing a strange sound, the first reaction is to stay still. Then, common sense advises any animal to take a step back. It has entered forbidden territory, the safety distance from a rattlesnake. The snake doesn't want to harm anyone, but it doesn't like having anyone so close. It's scared, which is why it gives fair warning. The rattle is a good discouraging alarm. These snakes scare predators with it, and in general, any species that comes too close. The combination of tone, rhythm, and volume in some sounds is able to catch one's attention, as a rattle catches a baby's attention. But these sounds can seriously alter the state of mind of anyone who listens to them. Alarms make all of us nervous. Their repeated sounds with the right frequency and the genes of all living beings able to hear react in the same way. They stimulate the production of hormones that make us highly alert. When we talk about rattlesnakes, we normally talk about their venom and about how dangerous they are. Fear doesn't allow us to see beyond that. And the most surprising fact about these snakes, what's truly incredible, is how this reptile has been able to develop its extraordinary rattle, a unique device among living beings. Certain ophidians, ones even more primitive than the rattlesnake, also move their tails when they feel threatened or aroused. And on certain soils, they also produce noise, although it's no more than a whisper. Some authors contend that with these movements they're offering bait, something similar to an earthworm, to their small prey. Perhaps it's only a means of diversion, something that's produced to calm the nerves of anything that makes them uncomfortable. And they can do this quickly or slowly. In a certain way, both theories would help to explain how the complex muscular system developed that these snakes have created to move their tails. But what about the rattle? How did it evolve? It seems to be made of skin left over from successive sheddings, accumulated over the animal's most recent scales. A horny point that is used as the base of the instrument. But how would this accumulation of skin be used initially when it didn't emit sound? And why would it end up moving in such a dizzying way? It's still a mystery. Many animals produce sounds, but there are very few species, however, that have evolved to use sound as a defense mechanism. They're interesting exceptions.